Hello, and welcome to the Kemetic How-To Guide for Egyptian Pagan and Kemetic Practitioners. I'm your host, Sharon. The Egyptian word for magic is spelled H-E-K-A, and generally people pronounce it Heka. Now, what's interesting is the Coptic word is spelled more like H-I-K-E, uh, obviously using the Coptic alphabet. So it may have been pronounced more like Hika. And so if you see that word as you're surfing the internet and trying to learn about uh, Egyptian religion, uh, if you say it Hika, you technically would be correct. So I have a whole chapter on Hika or Heka in Circle of the Sun. But what's beautiful about video is I can better illustrate things visually, like the materials that are used in basic Hika and uh, where to find them. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Most of these ingredients are pretty easy to find. It's very, very simple materials. So to start off with, I can pull it out here. String. Usually red or black string would be used. Um, and this was used for tying knots, to, to bind, to block out, to, to immobilize something. What's interesting is uh, the Egyptian word sa, which is um, protection of a, a magical sort, uh, was spelled with one of two pictograms that were either uh, an amulet or a series of knots in string. So, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you get into more elaborate spells, uh, like in the, the Leiden Papyrus, that call for several strands of red and white and blue uh, string, you know, tied around someone's wrist. The, the description kind of made me think of those old friendship bracelets that everybody used to braid, you know, uh, back when I was a kid, eons and eons ago. Um, another common ingredient, uh, well, actually, here's, here's the thing, it would be cloth. In ancient times, they used linen, but cotton has superseded linen as the, uh, primary textile of choice, so cotton broadcloth would be our equivalent of linen. Uh, true linen is actually uh, more scarce and more expensive than, than broadcloth. You'd have to go to a, a fabric shop uh, to get uh, something like linen, but uh, pretty much any place that has a, you know, if you have a Walmart that has a fabric department, you could probably find white broadcloth, you know, uh, without any real trouble. Another common ingredient, and a similar issue to linen, ancient spells will call for papyrus. And you can get papyrus nowadays, um, especially if you look online, um, eBay stores, you know, there are places in Egypt and out of Egypt that uh, make and sell papyrus. But you're paying much more, obviously, per sheet of it, so uh, it comes at a premium nowadays. If you want to use real papyrus for something to, to write down, you know, names on it, you know, or something. Uh, I have one papyrus that's uh, a list of all the uh, friends of the family and, you know, family members who, who passed away. And, and that's our, our list of, you know, the blessed dead. Um, and it's on real papyrus. Um, and I keep that list in a special place. But uh, an, a cheaper alternative that you could use, especially for other uh, hika that would involve burning or otherwise destroying the paper, um, just get parchment paper, especially uh, resume paper. This is just a sheet of ivory colored resume paper. It works really well and you can get it a lot cheaper per sheet than the papyrus. Another ingredient that they used a, a lot, and it's a, a magical ingredient, uh, would be wax. Here again, the ancients used probably beeswax, which you you can get it um, at I think um, uh, Whole food stores, you know, health stores. Uh, you can find uh, or uh, craft stores, Hobby Lobby. You can go and find beeswax. Uh, but you know, if you're in a pinch, especially if you're going to use colored wax, just you know, a candle will do. Um, you know, these are just made of regular paraffin wax. Uh, red candles are used a lot in uh, execration 
spells, and uh, execration is just a uh, an expensive word for uh, to banish, to cast out. And uh, Christmas time actually is a really good time to stock up on on red candles because you know they they have them for the holidays, and you can get lots of things that are uh, cinnamon scented too, which uh, is a, a good you know scent to use for for certain things. Um, another ingredient that uh, you'll hear about a lot in Egyptian work is uh, natron. And of course, if you don't know what you're looking at, you know, it's a white powder. It could be, you know, anything. Um, last thing I would want to be doing is uh, selling mail order natron because, you know, heaven knows what somebody would think it is. In Following the Sun, I give a recipe, uh, a very basic recipe for natron. Uh, and, you know, in short, it's uh, sodium, uh, uh, it's table salt and uh, baking soda. What's interesting is uh, if you get, like my husband uses a, a nasal rinse and the, the little uh, saline packets are chemically identical to this. It's uh, sodium chloride and, and uh, baking soda. Now the natron that was used in Egypt contains two other ingredients, soda ash and glauber salt. Um, those are the other two ingredients. If you wanted to look that up, uh, then take the recipe from Following the Sun and uh, mix it if you wanted to get you know, a more chemically identical uh, form of natron. You know, um, what natron is used for uh, is to purify uh, you know, both yourself and your physical space. You know, I've cast it at the thresholds to shoo out negative influences. Um, natron water uh, is sprinkled, you know, in purification at uh, rituals and, and funeral rites, um, and, you know, uh, again, as the the case of the, the saline packets, it also, um, you know, has some practical applications, and, uh, some healing properties, I guess you could say. The last uh, ingredient for hika is red pottery. And these things are really cheap. You can get them at dollar stores, Wally World craft stores, Lowe's, um, pretty much anywhere that sells little red flower pots. These things can be used for uh, casting out evil execration rites. Uh, as I talked about in the episode on ritual safety, in uh, certain rituals uh, what we'll do is certain parts of it call for, you know, uh, destroying the, the the enemies of of Cyrus or the enemies or the enemies of Ra, and uh, you know it's represented by, you know, the uh, red ceramic. Um, you can either throw it onto concrete or a hard surface, or take a stout object, you know, broom handle or something, and and crush it. Um, now, when it comes to the execration magic, and uh, when I was writing about this, you know, a good friend of mine, he's you know in uh, uh, the, he's listed in my my acknowledgments, you know, talked with me about this, and and his concern is that you know if if this is potentially uh, something that people could use for ill, you know, uh, you want to um, not share this. Well, if you know where to look, if you're interested in Hicka. Uh, there are plenty of sources out there, and you know uh, they're available free on the internet that you can find. So, you know, it's the temptation is out there, you know, to to use magic, you know, against somebody. But, you know, I, and this was done in ancient times. You know, you had the the state rights that they would do, where they would list the the enemies of the state, and they would, you know, smash the the images or the red pottery or whatever. Um, people would try to hex each other. As a matter of fact, in ancient times, um, uh, there was uh, an expression about you know death by pot shirt, meaning you know somebody hexing you. Um, but I don't advise anybody do this, you know themselves obviously, and uh, you know any if you are interested in practicing magic, practicing hika, uh, be very careful and be very ethical with what you do. You know, this this is power, and that's not something you want to toy with. So you, you want to use it constructively. 
um, there was a, a famous quote that's often you know used you'll see a lot in, in uh, you know online uh, comedic groups it's from the instructions of Mary Kara and, uh, and he said uh, the creator uh, gave humankind hicka to ward off the blows of what might happen which means that uh, the Creator gave us magic to protect ourselves with, not to try to, you know, use it against other people. That's my two cents on the matter. And uh, I've seen people, you know, I, uh, my dad had a girlfriend who, uh, you know, was into, you know, what she said was voodoo, and uh, she was always she'd get mad if somebody said, "Well, I'm gonna hex his wiener off." She got sick a lot, just so you know. <laughs> so uh, the the whole thing about stuff coming back sevenfold, that's that's for however much that's for real. But hopefully this will give you a frame of reference and uh, some ideas about uh, materials. If you know that kind of uh, work, craft work is uh, something you're interested in, and hopefully it will help you in your own practice, be it Egyptian, pagan, comedic, or whatever. So for the comedic how-to guide, this is Sharon wishing you synapti. <laughs>